thank you very much for inviting me to share the nonsense I've been up to for the last few years. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let me just start by saying I uh, got the. I, I've been interested in popular culture issues for a long time, uh, and uh, I was sort of struggling for a way to enliven the introductory class and the introductory sociology class needs enlivening. <laughs> and uh, I was browsing around in. Uh, Dalton somewhere, a bookstore, I can remember it, I ran across this book. And I thought, well, that's an interesting idea. And it turns out that Tim Delaney is uh, sort of an expert in, in using popular culture, and he's a real Seinfeld fan. And he actually put together a book, which is essentially, it's an introductory social book. So it's organized topically, pretty much the way you would find, you know, any sociology, basic sociology book. Uh, but what's unique about it is that he illustrates all of the different concepts using the episodes from Seinfeld. So I decided that this would be an interesting thing to try, and it's kind of evolved over, you know, I've done it three times now, and it kind of evolves over time and it changes a little bit. And I've also discovered that uh, most of our students don't know Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> the, show, the show has it's been off the air for over 10 years, although it is still, as you probably know, syndicated. Uh, and if students want, they can see other episodes of it. Uh, the Turner Broadcasting System plays back-to-back -back episodes of Seinfeld almost every night. And so it's still readily available, but it is getting, you know, a little torn around the edges, shall we speak. You know, the large phones and they don't have cell phone stuff and all that. I have played around with the idea of using uh, more recent uh, uh, comedy series and other television shows, and I have done that some, but the ones that I really like to use are often uh, HBO, and as you may well know, you, you kind of have to be a little careful with those uh, <laughs> they, in the classroom. Like, for example, one of my recent research projects was comparing uh, the way people talk about race on, in television using Archie Bunker as an example over against Larry David, you know, in his recent show, Curb Your Enthusiasm. And if you start showing Curb Your Enthusiasm episodes, you know, I, I've done it, but I have to tell students that there will be things they might find objectionable. And so it's kind of a problem. Seinfeld. Ten years ago, you know, things that were edgy then aren't now, and so I really haven't had that kind of problem. But what I thought I'd do today is, first of all, just introduce to you what I've been doing. Uh, I've taken a little excerpt from my course description, so you can see what I try to do in the class. And this is just right out of my course outline, and it explains to students that the class is going to be a little unusual, uh, and that we're going to use this book together with a classical, you know, with a book that actually has, you know, old, boring things that students don't really want to read. But I put them together uh, and talk about, you know, how we'll actually do this. And, of course, the premise of Delaney's book is that, uh, um, oh, and I forgot it either, didn't I? The premise of Delaney's book is that certain aspects of popular culture, such as a very popular show, often touch on issues that reflect on the character of a particular society. And Jerry Seinfeld's co-director, Larry David, gave us a show that ran networks for 10 years. <laughs> And we're going to try to understand something about our society by looking at those. Each class is organized like this. Uh, there'll be a, I talk about concepts, and I'm going to try to give you a demonstration in a moment of, of how I do that. Uh, I talk about concepts that are introduced in the chapter of Delaney's book uh, for that week. And then I do give a lecture. Uh, it, sometimes it's hard for me to keep it short, but I try. <laughs> and I talk a little bit about you know, the, uh, the concepts. And the purpose of these lectures is to show the development and usefulness of a concept. And then we watch an episode of Seinfeld and finish each class with a discussion of that episode and ask some questions about, uh, that are guided by the concepts that I've tried to talk about. You know, hopefully they will have read some of this before they come in, but not always. Uh, here's an example of the reading assignments. Uh, so I will have, for example, in week five, you know, making a living, uh, you know, or, or why would George steal from the Yankees? Uh, and then you can see in the Delaney, they read the chapter on the workplace, which is basic sort of sociology of occupations. And then from the Howard book, a, a brief episode from the Communist Manifesto, which is kind of an interesting way to put those together. Uh, week six, you know, viva or not la différence, and then we talk about that, and you can see what's going on. Now, what I would like to do today is to illustrate what I sometimes what I do 
with week seven, or being different in society, what really happens, which is the chapter on deviance. And deviance is a standard course that sociologists teach and have taught forever, and now you find it criminal justice is all over the place. But it's basically about what makes people different and how we decide you know, what's normal and what's not. Okay, that gets me into the way I do a class. For example, in this particular illustration, I want to talk about changes that have taken place in society that have resulted in replacing what Irving Goffman calls reputational knowledge with informational knowledge. Uh, ways of thinking about who people are in society. And this draws, for those of you, you know, I don't, I don't talk about social, I'm trying to illustrate what I do. <laughs> so if it doesn't make any sense, you can shut it off until I get, but I, this is what I try to do. You know, what, what, what are these concepts? You may remember that Irving Goffman wrote this fantastic book that everybody still reads back in 1963 called Stigma Notes on the Management of Spoiled Identity. And in it, he gives a history of the way in which uh, human beings in various societies have stigmatized folks over time. And he talks about bodily stigmas and tribal stigmas and character stigmas. And the big point that he gets to is that in pre-modern times, the, the way in which people got spoiled was that their actual identity and their virtual identity were the same. In other words, if they had a facial defor deformity or they couldn't speak, you know, they were deaf or they were blind or in some way, their actual identity, which Goffman, or their virtual identity, which Goffman defines as sort of the images that we give off and the way we want people to think about us, and the actual, which is what we are, one and the same. And there was really no escaping that, you know. So, for example, if you were born disabled and it, you, you're disabled your whole life, right, and you play the role of a disabled person throughout your life in that society, there are no ways for you to really get out of it. You may work with your family. And, I mean, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I mean, you know, it's, there's a wonderful new film out called Music by Prudence. I don't know if any of you have seen that, which is a wonderful story, you know, about a disabled woman in Zimbabwe uh, and how she forms a band. And you know, it's really sort of moving, but in the first part of the film, you discover what it's like to be disabled in Zimbabwe. You know, there's, you don't talk, talk your way out of it. Now, that's the point. And Goffman says that as we move on in our society and we become more informational, we deal with a lot of people we don't know. And we don't really know people by virtue of our experiences. We simply know them by their appearances. You know, and we judge people on the basis of their appearances. And that means that the difference between virtual identity, which is the way people want to see us, and the way we actually are, is vulnerable. <laughs> it's always possible for somebody who doesn't believe the same kind of thing you do about what's normal to point out that who you pretend to be is not who they think you really are. And when that kind of discrepancy comes into effect, you get stigmatized. Right? And you can get into some really interesting discussions about that. That's what I, I try to do. So virtual, when virtual identity does not equal actual, that results in a discreditable judgment that yields a stigma. And again, this is all stuff straight from <coughs> Goffman. Okay, so that's what I do. You know, and I go through and I talk about Goffman, and it's hopefully it's kind of an interesting talk. You know, I've given it for now I don't know how many years, <laughs> at least 63, I guess that's what <laughs> Goffman wrote. But uh, and and that's what I do. So. What I'd like to do now is to show you the, uh, an episode from Seinfeld that I think goes along with my little brief lecture on Goffman's notions of stigma. And I'll see if this... Where'd you see that? I met him on, <coughs> on an elevator. You met a woman on an elevator? Impossible, right? You got less than 60 seconds. It's like this man with a time bomb. <laughs> what kind of deal? I don't know. She was so beautiful. It was like a pure reflex. The words just came out of my mouth. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I'm the one responsible for those crop circles in England. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe I did that? What is she saying? Red crop circles. <laughs> Everybody knows what the crop circles are. Do you know what the crop circles are? The crop circles? Why don't you buy yourself? <laughs> what? It's green. Oh man, it's spinach! I've been walking around like this all afternoon. Did you bump into anybody you know? I had a job interview. <laughs> How'd it go? Take a guess. <laughs> <laughs> that we had nothing available at the present time, but you're anything over there. We'll be in touch. 
But then these are the kind of discussion questions that I come up with. You know, Jerry's attraction to the woman on the elevator. You know, what, what attracted him. So what I'm trying to get at is the idea of virtual and actual identity. You know, where are the images that are given off? What are the people actually like? When you go through the whole episode, I don't know if any of you have ever seen this <coughs> episode. You might want to know how it ends. <laughs> uh, Jerry finds out that the beautiful woman is a complete idiot. <laughs> can't have anything to do with her because she just knows nothing. She's complete blank. And there's a wonderful episode where he has this debate between his penis and his brain as to which he's going to fall. <laughs> and the brain, the brain wins out. The actual wins out over the virtual. And then with regard to the nose job, uh, the woman uh, decides it's a wonderful idea and, she, and she's uh, a plastic surgeon is recommended by Kramer and she goes and gets the job and it's botched. So there's this wonderful scene where the bandage comes off and they're all <laughs> cringing. And she's worse than she was before. And then eventually she gets it repaired and once she becomes beautiful, and you can probably guess the end here, she wants to have nothing to do with George. <laughs> and that's the way that's the way it ends. But I think you can see, you know, so we can talk about these a little bit. You know, what is George's attraction to the woman on the elevator? You know, it's it's the image she gives off, right? And we're making judgments about her character, Jerry is at least, based upon the images she gives off. 
And of course, the stigma comes when there's a discrepancy. George's view of the large nose. You know, George is very much aware that he does not meet the standards of beauty in the society. Uh, but nevertheless, he still uses them for what counts. And this nose is so large that it can no longer be considered normal. <coughs> We've been talking about that. Uh, virtual identities in these two cases. Okay. And what are the actual identities? And why did Kramer's recommendation alter the nature of the gathering at the friends at Jerry's at the, uh, at the gathering of friends at Jerry's apartment? You know, and who gets stigmatized? Right. So anyway, these, that's what I've got. That's what I do. And when, and when uh, you know, sometimes we get into some very long discussions, you know, about, you know, who's doing what and why it's funny and what are, you know, what are the stigmas and if maybe there's no stigma at all there. Uh, but anyway, so this is, this is what I do. And, and I uh, hopefully, any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got a question. Um, do you have any strategies for helping to keep them focused on these issues rather than the plot? Well, that's a, that's everybody here. That's that is a problem. You know, as I already mentioned, they want to see the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. And and sometimes I stop it and do a discussion. But uh, the last time I did this class, I gave up and just showed the whole episode. <laughs> and and it's uh, the nice thing about that is you know these don't have the commercials. So they're actually only about 20 minutes long. So it is possible, uh, in, at least with the Seinfeld, since they've been out for so long, to show it and then go back. And that way everybody gets satisfied and you all get to laugh and you have fun and then you can go back and sort of ruin it by analyzing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you ever considered um, thinking on this issue of uh, students maybe not remaining to Seinfeld, having an assignment where they look for, you know, maybe assign a couple of students each week to look for something in pop culture yes. that illustrates this concept and have that bring it to the class. Yes, I've done that. I have a thing called a concept paper, you know, where that's what they're supposed to do, is to take one of the basic concepts that we've talked about in one of the chapters, stratification or something, and go out and essentially document it in, in uh, a television show or a movie. Uh, anything in the popular culture. And, and you know, the students, even the introductory students, are really sometimes quite good at that. You know, if they, if they get a simple, if they can get an idea, you know, about, okay, so stigma is caused by the discrepancy between virtual identity and actual identity. Now, can I go find some examples of that? And they come up with some really wonderful things. That's been very useful. Yeah. Well, it's going to be short. But I was hoping we have a lot of questions. You want to see the rest of the episode? You want to see the rest of the episode? <laughs> in the large intro class. I think it would work, this would work, do a lot better in a smaller class. So yeah, no, I haven't done that. And I think also one of the advantages of using Seinfeld is that so many of the episodes are really comments on everyday life, and it fits so well with sociology that you can actually sort of go through the whole class using one episode. And I think one of the things I've found is that the kids get scattered, the students get scattered, you know, they're all over the place and they kind of lose the focus. The advantage of Seinfeld is that it's all right there. Right. But you could do that, you know, I think The Office would be another good series that could be used. Friends, you know, any of these long, long running sitcoms uh, uh, have got something about them that strikes a nerve with Americans and tells us something about culture. Yeah. I teach a language and class to my undergrad students, and a lot of times when we hit uh, pragmatics, 
um, I highlight the big bang theory with Sheldon on it, who exhibits some of the characteristics that tend to be a little bit harder to really explain to them. It gives them some very concrete examples, but I hadn't thought about bringing in a, a video clip from it. It might be a nice way to do it. How that basis your class? Um, like, do you have their clips and that to show cross uh, cultural differences? Like, this is where it was done. And I'm also from Zimbabwe, where you mentioned um, music by Prudence, so I'm going to look it up. But um, I'm, I'm just curious to know how that basis your student from your class. Whether all the students relate to the Seinfeld? Is no, it like cultural differences. That students bring to yes. the interpretation of yeah. this? Yeah, that's, and there are also generational differences, too, uh, and senses of humor. Like, I've, I've uh, sat and watched students' reactions to Seinfeld, and, you know, some stuff that I think is just absolutely hilarious, the students just sit there dead. <laughs> you know, just, they, they don't get it. And I think a part of it is this satire thing, you know, or sarcasm that's just built into a sort of urbanized way of looking at life. And Seinfeld, the whole thing's in New York, and the whole thing has a sort of a, a Jewish character to it, you know, that Jerry and George are Jewish, and they have Jewish families, and that whole thing is involved. And, so, and our students, some of them just don't relate to it. And I'm sure that international students don't relate as much to it either. And that's going to be, I think, a disadvantage any time you use popular culture. Uh, it, it is biased towards the American experience. Now, if I could find something that would work, I don't, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I have a, sorry to me, but I have a practical question. Where do you get your clips? Do you have, like, the DVDs? Do you order them? I bought them all, yeah. Collection? I just bought them, yeah. Okay. yeah. But with I was lucky with Seinfeld <coughs> because, uh, well, to back up, I was doing research on Kirby enthusiasm anyway, so I had collected all these Kirby enthusiasm. And so it was really easy for me to find, you know, the, the whole volumes of Seinfeld you can buy for six bucks, seven, I think they're, all of them are under $20. And I just have the whole, the whole thing, you know, from one to the end. And, and Delaney did a great deal of the work for me. Like, for example, uh, at the, in the back of the book is a list of all, uh, I think it's 189 episodes of Seinfeld. And each one is indexed but with the chapter in which that episode is mentioned. So it made it real easy for me to just go through and find, I'm talking about stratification or inequality in society, then, you know, he's cited episode 6, 7, and 113 in chapter 7, and it, was, it really saved me a lot of time. If you were to do this from scratch, you'd have to do all that work that Delaney did on a new episode. So it, it would be very time consuming. It was when I did uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. You know, I spent a lot of time watching Larry David. <laughs> I'm just listening to you and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, nursing, well, all these programs they put on television about nursing oh, yeah. medicine, they're so far from true. Yeah. So far from true. <laughs> and I, I'm thinking, you know, this would be great to show to, to students. I, I think she's already been since so they're already out there. They know what we're but the students that are going to be in the medical school, this would be a, you know, a great way to teach them what is ethical versus not ethical and what will yeah. happen. So, <coughs> yeah, that Showtime series. What is it? It's, it's Nurse. It one called Scrubs. That was really bad. Well, yeah, <laughs> that was a... Yeah. <laughs> The, the one that's running now, I forgot, it's, it's a person's name. Is anybody familiar with this? Nurse, Jackie. Nurse somebody. Jackie. Nurse Jackie, yeah. But now that's supposed to be real, so it would be interesting to say something that's supposed to have a reality. They have a lot of drug use and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Are you talking about whether it's okay to use these things? Yeah. 
Yeah. Picking up that we can't use it in PowerPoint for educational purposes. I, so I we think can. you can. Well, because I work in the, the library, we deal with a lot of the copyright issues and everything. Oh. And that's how you can order, you know, on films from uh, Amazon or PBS or whatever, because they're showing in the classroom. There's a whole a whole criteria for educational usage. Yeah. Okay. So you're, sure you're not showing it to an audience or you know, you're not charging admission. You're showing it in your classroom for educational purposes. So, so y'all have those new guidelines? I don't know about I'm not aware of any brand new guidelines, but I'm just you know, I, I don't know that that's a change. That's how it's always been. Educational purposes is a whole different ballgame. Okay. They have more freedoms. Yeah, I've never heard anybody having trouble using <coughs> clips and shorts. As long as you don't yeah. charge as much or, or copy and distribute. Yeah. Is it still all right with online classes provided it's on Blackboard? That way only our students are accessing. That's I can't see that. Yeah. talk to that. That's a great yeah. question. This <laughs> <laughs> all falls under educational, you know, um, purposes, pretty much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
has, has no boundaries. And they get the, the number one expert in any one field. And it's a pretty drab background. They sit on a, uh, on a couple of chairs and have a discussion and they, they make a presentation going. But they'll go for an hour, an hour and a half. And so what I do, uh, first off, my students seem to have a really, uh, it's hard for them to focus. They get into the classroom, especially at night class at 6 o'clock, and it takes a while. So I sometimes kick off the class with a short video that uh, captures their attention that has something to do with what I'm going to go into next. And what I do is I'll go to Fora or Ted, see the video that I like, and then go to YouTube and find the, the, the shorthand version. Because five minutes is all they, they'll sit through. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> uh, unlike your students, my students are, are off doing something else after a few minutes. Yeah. Well, uh, was that Fora? F-O-R-A. Thank you. Not Flora, but F, because everybody I tell, I, I must is say it. Is it Fora TV.com? It's ForaTV.com. Oh, and it is, it, it's well worth your visit. Thank you. And it's got a search term, you just put it in, you can search for who you want to hear or what you want to hear about. Wow. It's great. Nice. Another example I can think of, um, from time to time I've taught um, some gender classes looking at changes in the U.S. And it's really interesting to have students look at some old TV shows and how women's roles were portrayed and how it's compared to today. Other things that you need to try or that you might want to try? Um, teaching writing, I've done that to a, a unit on the Battle of the Sexes. Yeah. And I didn't even think about using clips, but I was assigned them to watch a rerun of Everybody Loves Raymond, you know, okay. telling them when it's on and what channel. Mm -hmm. And every single episode is really like that, so I just get my assignment. You can make some observations about the differences in the Did you hear that, the way she incorporates it in the writing classes? Other ideas? You know, I wonder if you were to have a, a whole class in whatever discipline that really involved a lot of pop culture things in sociology or for myself in political science, I wonder if you could require your students to get a Netflix account for three months, they're $8.99 a month. I don't, I mean, would that be ridiculous? Because they have these uh, instant downloads, which all, like 30 Rock, and and Seinfeld and The Office and whatever else, the students can watch the episode instantly on their computer. They don't have to wait for a video in the mail. But that would be a requirement of class to subscribe to Netflix. What does it cost? Wait, it's $8.99 a month. Oh, that's it. So they have to yeah, buy expensive textbooks. It would be $30 that you, you know, I don't know, cut out another textbook. I don't know. You probably would focus it down to two months and then that would be in October. We're really going to be watching during this period of class. Right, first month, month free. Month. 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 30 day trial. So it's only really nine bucks a year. Mm -hmm. Two months.
I require my students to uh, attend a, a civil court hearing and every semester they will ask me, oh, what about Judge Judy? <laughs> I actually once wrote a paper. I watched the People's Court in the Deep Dark Ages. I was intrigued with um, sort of the American culture, the notions of, of you know placing blame and the kinds of excuses and what counts as well. He did it first. I mean, it was just amazing. Uh, yeah, Judge Judy's another. <laughs> What's your answer, though? Yeah, Judy. Yes. Well, um, you were mentioning using the, uh, that's the, the beginning of the class to get students' attention, or otherwise not focused. So I have an example of this from this week. I teach several sections of World Net, and they're currently reading from the uh, Indian epic, the Bhagavad Gita. And I have this clip I found on YouTube. You can find so much on YouTube. <laughs> and it's, it's Robert Oppenheimer quoting from the Gita. The using describing the first impression of seeing the very first test of the atom bomb, um, using the, 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 the line uh, describing Krishna revealing himself as uh, having the radiance of a thousand suns. So I showed this, I did this in several, at, at, sort of toward the end of class in a couple of sections, and I got mixed results. It, just, it sort of came, I just kind of threw it in there, and it didn't, it didn't, the context didn't quite work. But for the third section, I thought, okay. Since the clip begins with actual footage of that, that the explosion of the bomb, it begins with a countdown, five, four, three, two, one, and then the whole screen fills up with this mushroom bath. I started the third section with that. Just lights out, countdown, explosion, and that, that then captivated me. Started out with the name. So it's all in, in the positioning of it. And you reflect how you have to take so carefully I want to use this material, especially a short clip, where in the class it the most <coughs> I have the luxury of having three sections in a row, so that by the third one, I can get a different test. But that, that was very insightful. Yes. Yeah. Um, what I think is very interesting about this Yeah. There's a sign-in sheet somewhere over there. If you want a chance at a Kindle, you want your boy, sign in.